Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to yet another Tuesday recap of this last week of downshift racing today. On Tuesday, we are running our Group B race here on Brands Hatch, the full circuit. And this episode is going to be mostly Group B because we're making up for the 4th of July's race, and then when we hit our Thursday race, then we're still doing Group B. So this one was quite fun. Uh, again, as we start out, we're having some very close fighting. And there is some conversation going around where it's just like, I know that I did a little bit of practice. I probably should have done a little bit more as per usual, but I'm feeling good and confident with the WRX here. Some of the conversations were going, I was even making mention ironically on the mic saying, hey, I know I always like have a really good first lap and then something always happens where I get caught out and then have to make up some very weird racing incident where I have to spend the entire race catching up and that's exactly what happened here it's just like clockwork there's a racing incident there's no one really to blame it just again the tires just weren't heated up they just weren't good and somebody broke late and took a couple of us out and here we go starting from basically the back again and that was just kind of how the race went there were some times where I was just slowly making my way up. We're finally on about lap four. I am able to make a pass up into fifth position as Omar goes a little bit wide on the first turn. It, it's a notorious corner for doing that, that very dive, that deep dive down and then off to the right just has a tendency to throw your cars just right off into the gravel trap. And then only just a little bit later, same corner, same area. Shio falls off in the same way, and I make a pass on him. And he gets close a couple of times within the remainder of the lap, but I'm able to make it stick. And that's just the rest of the race. I, it's, I know that everybody up front runs quick, runs fast, has some great tunes, has some great builds, and I'm just trying my best to catch up to them. I mean, my lap times in my mind, I was very ecstatic to see that they were very consistent. They're in the high 131s and the low 132s. There's a lap or so that I have a mistake where I gain two seconds on it. And then the race is over. I finish 14 seconds down from third place or thereabouts. And that's just sometimes how it goes. It's a really eventful first lap. And then the rest of the race was pretty meh for our second race for this video. We are discussing our Group B race for Thursday. It is, once again, the Subaru WRX on Lake Louise. Yes, that is Louise, not Louis. Apparently, this is on the non-French side of Canada. Who knew? I learned a lot from uh, my, my dad today, apparently. <laughs> so, as this goes, I know that I am not very quick when it comes to the snow. I know that there are a lot of other people that are super fast when it comes to this. Uh, the fastest lap, I think, was a 150. Well, it's actually a 55 second. And actually, if we can pan over here, we can see Bulldog hits the wall and goes straight up in the air rather hysterically. But again, I qualified terribly, like a 58, 59 second lap. And everybody else was getting 54, 55, 56, somewhere in there. So I had a feeling that today, I, I'm pretty sure I had adjusted or tuned my car in such a way that, you know, it, it should have worked okay. But when it came to this, I really did need to do a lot more practice. I did a little bit, quite a bit more than I usually do. I probably started an hour earlier just practicing this track. And it, again, just not enough. And this track, again, is the tri-oval format. And already by middle lap two, I'm down the order and I am just, again, struggling where it's, I am, the, the problem with these, this track is that with the gravel tracks, you really need to flick the car like a quarter of a mile before the corner. And I'm getting the flicks down, but it's just, they're not early enough. I'm still really struggling with this. And my lap times are just being completely demolished 
because of this, because I'll go around the corner, I'll just tap the wall, I get a half second penalty, I'll do it again, and my one minute lap time starts to turn into 103s or 105s. And again, everybody's fastest laps are like 55 seconds, so when we're running this only a minute long lap time, I'm starting to get really concerned really quickly that my race is going to be over pretty quickly. And not only am I going to have to fight to stay on the track and out of the walls, I'm then going to have to worry about being lapped. And that was kind of what was going on. So then finally, that is kind of what happened on lap nine. It was actually about three laps later than I was expecting. I was expecting to be lapped by lap six. So here on turn two, I have one of the most beautiful lines that I've ever had through that corner. And then I decide to flick the car out a little bit too soon. I have too much of an angle and too much on the throttle. I just go up on the inside there. Both Magnum and Ringmaster are able to make up the place. So Magnum's now up in fifth. Ring gets a very clean pass on me. I've then got a second and a half penalty that I have to serve. Not this lap, but next lap. But then it gets even worse because at the end of this straight, we're now in the beginning of turn one. Same thing happens. I decide to flick it out a little bit too early, and I collect up on the inside of the wall. I get a double tap, so I'm now up to four and a half seconds. Haven is able to make up the lapped pass on the outside, and we are now just struggling. Just struggling, struggling, struggling to get this car around this track at this point. At some point, I'm pretty sure the game decided to be a little bit more lenient with me and notice the amount of times I'd be tapping the wall and figured that, you know, continuously getting me more and more and more and more penalties probably isn't worth everybody's time. So they started to let it slide a little bit. And again, my lap times are just atrocious. I think I almost get lapped twice, but we're coming up on the last couple of corners there. I'm having some fights with the ring. I'm telling them, look, man, I do not want to be lapped twice and we come across the line again, I just not having a good race at all. And again, sometimes that's just the way it goes. It just, no matter how much you practice, sometimes you either just gotta do some more practice or just you just have a bad day and not a good race to end with for this Thursday. Oh, but the contrary, that is not what we ended with on this Thursday. What happened here is we really are super ecstatic, super excited to get into our final, finally get into the endurance racing series, our multi-class endurance racing. And we're sitting here going, well, our last course is Fisherman's Ranch. And we're looking at each other going, okay, why don't we just do a quick two-lap race and just, you know, give it double points, call it a day. So there we went. And as you can tell, none of us really had much practice. And it was straight chaos. We actually had a quick, like, you know, practice lobby or so, or qualifying lobby. I was incredibly impressed because when I first did it, I was able to go nearly a full lap without getting any penalties whatsoever. I was super excited to finally, like, feel like I was driving okay again. This was the same day as Lake Louise. And here we are, just straight chaos at the very beginning. Everybody is running into everybody else, and within, like, the first 30 seconds, I have six seconds worth of penalties. Flanders is laughing at me about that line that I had just taken there, where it was just super on the outside and then get thrown up on the inside, and it's just... This was a very, 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 very fun track because of the chaos, because everybody is learning it kind of all at the same time. And we know because of this track's just size that it would take weeks to master this. And here we are just deciding, screw it, two laps, double points, let's go. And here we are watching me get flung into the air. No way to really collect correct that self and yeah just immediate three second penalty so again what 
a chaotic race. So finally, by the end of lap two, things have settled down finally, and I am noticing that I am getting very close. <sighs> Again, I'm not close enough to collect a podium place to actually get some points, but I'm then getting so, so close to the backside of Flanders. I'm hoping that I can just make a last minute pass, but again, I'm overdriving this car. I'm trying my hardest to make anything work. And then we cross the line, couple seconds behind, I get a penalty or a couple of penalties because of the wall collisions right after the penalty line. And for whichever reason, I'm not sure, it just seems like that these spontaneous races that we have after our normally planned races, are always super fun, exciting, exhilarating, because they're just off the cuff. You can't really plan for them a whole lot, so you just decide to have some fun. So the Sunday race, we are on Alsace Reverse with front engine vehicles, any drivetrain, whether it be front wheel drive, rear wheel, all wheel drive, anything, 500 power point limit with, of course, NAS, as it is a Sunday race. Immediately, we're having some chaos going through here. I have decided to race as the Mazda Miata NR-A Roadster, the 2022 model year. I had seen earlier in the week, Drew had posted a tune of this vehicle, and he said, hell, might as well give it a try. And he was posting like a like a 216 lap time. And when I start testing this car, I get a great livery. I'm not able to match Drew's pace. I'm actually 10 seconds off. I'm getting a 226 lap time for for this car. And I'm going, well, what in the world? And it's just the tune doesn't feel right. And I have Paven, unfortunately, wasn't here Physically, he was able to join us in the voice chat, so I had him take a look at the car, and we tuned it up a little bit better, and we were able to get the tune just right where he's able to finally set for a qualifying lap, like a 224. Of course, that sends me to start 7th out of 8 racers, and I'm going, there is no way in hell that I've got a chance, but with some of these Sunday races, we've decided to turn boost back on, and... The, the having boost is kind of like a double-edged sword because in this situation as you can tell it is an absolute riot how we're just all trading places some of us are having some huge grave mistakes but we're able to make it up and we're coming up into this final corner we have almost two sets of three wide as I am drifting around this corner I just I don't actually collect anybody, but because of this wide line that I've taken, people were giving me lots of space thinking that I was going to collide up with them and send them off into the uh, grass. And just watching this racing was absolutely epic. To be a part of this and to have so many different cars, different tunes, different drivers, all very close with one another. Of course, the first three people, as per usual, just kind of take off into the distance, but as this race goes on, a lot of us are thinking this might just be the race. As this goes, we have a rule here, which I'll try to ignore this instant that I had with uh, Bulldog there. I did apologize in the moment. It just went a little bit wide and stuffed my door into his, but he was able to get that place back. This was a rather bit interesting because with Season 3's rule set, Shio likes to change up the rules a little bit, so it's not always the same, so adding boost was part of it. But in this situation is the requirement that tires will be changed during the race at some point in time. With this race, because of the 500 power point limit, a lot of people were running sports softs, I imagine, and that was what I was on. But I wasn't going to change tires from mediums to softs or softs to mediums or anything. It was just, you know, partway through the race, I would change down, well, just change to a new set of softs. And with the fuel as well, most of everybody was getting seven to eight laps of fuel. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, 
you know, just for simplicity's sake, will pit halfway through the race. Just call it at that. Halfway through the race, we pit, we get a new set of softs, we refresh them, so we have an equal amount of grip on either side of lap six. So I'm not having the tires degrade too badly on one side and have to make it up on the other stint and just kind of go with that. And I think it was a fine strategy as, to be quite honest, I think a lot of people had the similar mindset. They would either be pitting at exactly lap six, knowing that they've got an extra two laps of fuel, knowing that they can probably change their tires and be all right. And the other side of the strategy was running until the fuel went out and then just putting in a last little bit of the last splash of uh, fuel to cover up the last four laps. And again, as we're racing here, I don't think a lot of us were really focused on the strategy because at this point, we're just focused on trying to survive because as you can tell, there have been so many incidents where somebody would fall off the track and then, you know, would recover with a boost. And that was kind of what I was making mention earlier. I'm not sure if I actually was able to finish that thought before I went into a tangent. Having boost is kind of like a double-edged sword, where you're able to keep up with the pack, you're able to keep close with the racing. But the problem is with boost is that sometimes it's it's able to mask over some very poor driving standards and this wasn't to anybody in particular i think the driving standards of this race in general i mean it was a lot of good clean racing but there are a lot of times where there are some really out there moments where we're bumping doors and we're playing a little bit more dirty than we need to be and if we were to just give a little bit more space and be a little bit more aware of our surroundings and maybe try to communicate a little bit better about our moves, about what we're thinking about doing, maybe we wouldn't have so many incidents where somebody would get pushed off and then have to recover. But, you know, Justin had made a, or rather Magnum had made a very good point earlier where it's just because of the boost being on, there would be so many people that would push somebody else off and then they would just come back and then they'd get pushed off again where it's just like well that's that's not really racing at that point so there's there's this fine line where we have where like i was saying earlier having boost for like the spec races i think absolutely changed how the driving dynamic went because before with the spec racing if you screwed up that's kind of it and to each their own that also isn't racing. I wish that there was like, instead of just two levels of boost, I wish that there was really three where we have, you know, weak and strong, but I wish that we had a weak, a medium and a strong where the current weak is set to medium. And then we have something that was like in between weak and off because it just seems like that with even weak boost that there are the people at the back are really able to make up like 20 seconds a lap something absolutely crazy where it's like well yes we want them to be close but if you're giving them so much boost of that kind of nature then they don't really have to fight that hard to stay on the track they can just you know drive up and then be in the doors once again a lap later instead of really focus on hey I gotta make sure that I'm driving to the best of my ability, trying my best to stay with the group and not mess up. Because I know if I mess up, I'm gonna have to do another four or five laps of catching up, and there might not be that many laps left if I keep on having those issues. So it's just, there is so much, there's so much of a dynamic that having boost versus not having boost has, where I think we'll we'll see at this point if you can notice it's lap four and i've used nearly half of my nos to try to stay with this group and i'm actually quite happy with how this is going because again the first three people really just take off into the distance and again i was okay with it because i thought at the very beginning that i was going to be about 10 seconds off the pace and again somehow some way here i am fighting amongst fourth and fifth 
as rings coming up on the outside, well, actually inside of that corner. Drew's got to solve his penalty, get that sorted before we hit this last corner. We're starting to look up. Are we really going to do this three wide here? Ring comes up and giving Drew a little bit of a bump. And now we're starting to think, okay, we only got maybe a lap or two before we get to figure out our strategy. And we're coming up to the end of lap six, and we're finally starting to see how the strategy is going to play out. The first three dive into the pits, go from comfort hards to comfort hards. They fill up their fuel. Drew stays out. Ring and myself also dive into the pits as well. And at this point, do I finally realize, wow, these guys are running comfort hards. No wonder why they've got some serious speed. I'm trying to figure out how in the world they're staying on the track. But in this moment, I'm able to realize that I only needed just a tiny bit of fuel so I didn't have to stay in the pits for that long. And with all that being said, I'm noticing that everybody is out in front of me once again. And I'm going, well, maybe this is this is where the end of my race is in sixth position. And at that point, I actually realized not very long after that that it actually was not the case. I'm not sure exactly how it happened. But just after a lap, we're at the end of lap seven, going into lap eight, and I'm noticing there are people in front of me, and they're, I'm catching up to them very quickly. And at this point, I forget, again, that it's probably the boost doing this, because I'm sitting there going, my lap times aren't that extraordinary, but here we are. I'm now catching up to the back end of Bulldog and Jay, and... I had completely forgotten about the pit stops already and completely forgotten about who would pit, who would not pit. At this point, pretty much everybody on the leaderboard, apart from Drew, has made their pit. So Drew is going until he has absolutely no more fuel. So he's still just a little bit ahead of everybody. But as we can tell here, I've got not one, but two, but three, but four, but five people right in front of me. And I'm thinking to myself, there is a potential chance that this can get really interesting really quickly. For the sake of time, I will not discuss absolutely every single battle that happened between the pits and the very end of the race. It was just at this point that by mid-lap 11, the game was on. The typical three suspects had launched away up into the distance, and unfortunately, Berserker has an issue where he falls off the track, has his massive incident, and thus begins one of the most interesting battles we have had so far, where we have five people chasing down that last podium position. And this isn't something that it's just that Jay is just going to fly off into the distance. The boost has made us so much closer that he no longer can just run away with his car's tune, where he can just be in the slipstream of Shio and Flanders. He is now well within the fight of all of us as I just barely make a pass on Ring. He is on the intercom saying, that was damn close. I had to back out a little bit, but that was an exceptional pass. And again, we are just going at it. All five of us sniffing down that last podium position. We all smell the blood in the water as we are now beginning the final lap. This boost has, again, I understand Magnum's critiques that the boost can really drive people over the edge and drive way too hard and making these really unnecessary moves but at the flip side without it we don't have these fights that we do have here i would have fallen off so much earlier i would be at the back of the pack by at this point probably over a minute i could have easily been a couple minutes down but here i am with the rest of them in this fight so at this point, we've got this close fighting, and I'll just let this play. Here goes. Look at your radar. Uh, ah, was, we're good. I was watching it. God damn it. Ah, I'm going wide. Oh, Here comes you. the penalty. Nope, 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 nope. Ah. Ring. Oh, ring. Oh, 
<laughs> what happened? <laughs> hey, what's going on? <laughs> oh, now we get right, right in front of me. Still here. Oh. Okay. That's I was hey, hiding. Jay. I couldn't do anything. I'm coming for you. <laughs> My car went up in the air and everything. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was funny. Sometimes when you first start and you don't think you're going to go be successful, you don't think you're going to have close fighting, you don't think that you're going to have a good race, but then when you end up in the last place, that's either a self-fulfilling prophecy, but I think in this case, something different happened, where it set my expectations so low that I wasn't expecting much to happen, but I was completely blown out of the water about how incredibly good these fights for I want to say 8 out of these 12 laps were where when I finally ended up at the back of the pack at the very end of the race I really wasn't even mad because it ended in such a spectacular way that it was like, how can I be angry with what happened we were all racing as hard as possible where it just ended up to be where it was and at this point Rain is trying to maybe make up for some of his incidents and he's going to have this very dramatic finish and I probably could have passed him but it's just like no 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 you you got me in the last corner you're you're going to finish ahead of me so I made sure that he finished ahead of me I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm not disappointed on the flip side being an adult is a little bit difficult because I wanted to be able to have more time to practice if I had even an hour of practice, I would have figured out very quickly that this Mazda Miata Roadster is not what I was looking for. But on the flip side, the boost evened it out. Even though BOP wasn't on, the boost was able to even it out for the majority of the field. So, again, like I said, I'm not going to act like I'm not disappointed. But if I had more time to practice, I could have figured out a lot of this. But I'm also not mad with how it ended. And I thought that even though I ended in last place on a Sunday race, I'm not going to get many points for this at all. That's racing. And it ended in such a spectacular way that I can't be mad because at the end of the day, Look at all those laps of those close fightings that we had where we we're within doors with one another and we were just pushing each other, not physically, well, sometimes a little bit physically, but pushing ourselves to drive better and to break later and to take corners faster. And that this is why I appreciate this group so much. Because we've gotten to a point where we're here trying to better each other. We're doing it competitively and it's incredibly fun while we're doing it. And to have all this happening all at the same time really makes me reflect well on this group of, of again, why we're here. And this is only week two of this new season and I'm already absolutely floored with how well it's going. I can't even imagine how the rest of this season is going to go. And I can't even imagine how this next week is even going to go. Because on this next Tuesday, we're going to be running the Aston Martin Vantage GT3 car for the spec race on Mount Panorama. Followed by our inaugural endurance race. Our multi-class endurance race on Thursday. We are so excited we are so ready to see what is going to happen with that race. And of course, if next Sunday is going to be anything like these first two Sundays, we've got an incredible week ahead of us. So again, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And please stay tuned for an absolutely epic week that we're going to have next. So again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Bye.